We were having a lot of fun in the Balkans, and it felt like we had our very own adventure playground. We were headed to Bosnia, where the history is as diverse as the landscapes. It was the end of October, so we didn't know how much longer we'd have to roam at these heights. Soon the snow and ice would come, and with that, many of the passes would be closed. We're a family of four going around the world on a five-year overlanding journey. This is Jane, our grenadier, and we live here in our off-road trailer. Along the way, we'll be sharing stories to support projects that preserve and protect our wild earth. So the Trans-Euro Trail covers 100,000 kilometers around Europe. We used this as a rough guide for our off-roading in Bosnia, but it was created for motorcycles. So we definitely wouldn't be following it blindly. And we did our research before attempting each section. Oh, and also, we saw this warning on the TET Bosnia site. Even though it's been over 30 years since the start of the Bosnian War, the country is still littered with these landmines. So let's just say we would be sticking to the main tracks and not wandering off when we're wild camping. Twilight This is Sarajevo, the capital city of Bosnia, the Jerusalem of Europe as it's often described, and like Jerusalem, it has a long and complex history. While walking around, you can't help but notice the bullet holes and scarred buildings showing you a glimpse into the city's tumultuous past. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria-Hungary played a crucial role in sparking World War I and during the Bosnian War, the siege of Sarajevo was the longest siege in modern history, lasting 1,425 days. Yikes. Sarajevo has come a long way since then, and it's such a cool city. It was time to move on and make our way to Yugoslavia's biggest secret, still hidden inside Mount Zlatar. We were about an hour south of Sarajevo, where we went back in time to the Cold War era. As we walked around, it was hard to believe that this massive bunker was designed in total secrecy for 26 years. Even the construction workers who built this bunker would be blindfolded when taken on site. The bunker was designed to withstand a direct hit from a nuclear bomb and protect up to 350 people. It could operate for up to six months before needing to resupply. It's now known as Tito's Bunker, after the president at the time. The bunker is scattered with modern artworks, adding a cool twist to the visit. Thankfully, the bunker was never used. While we enjoyed learning about this fascinating Cold War relic, we were really happy to be back above ground and in the fresh air. Cause I just wanna hear your voice. I just 
wanna say your name Cause the thought of you has got me spinning Say the word and I'll be over in the minute We could talk about the weather The days were getting shorter and we were still kind of adjusting to this, which resulted in numerous dinners in the dark. Cooking in the dark when it's cold is not much fun, but the kids didn't seem to mind it. Our electric stove broke about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. So I'm just, I'm just really savoring this. We are loving Bosnia. However, our weather window is really tightening up and today is our last day for um, good weather. Tomorrow and then probably for another few weeks, there's a weather ban coming in and it's lots of rain. It's a lot colder. We, we're not sure where we're gonna go yet. We read about hundreds of horses that run wild on the Krog Plateau in the west of Bosnia. We arrived on the plateau late afternoon. As we made our way around the plateau looking for a place to sleep, we turned a corner to a group of horses munching away on the hill, which made our decision easy. We just had to stay there. The next morning, we threw on some clothes disconnected the trailer and went on what felt like an early morning safari. They were all different colors and just gorgeous. As you can see, I've got my winter gear on. <laughs> we've all got our hats on and a few more layers because we've crossed over into Montenegro from Bosnia. We had an amazing time there. That was sad. We were sad to go, but we really need to start heading south because it's getting so cold, especially up here in the mountains. I don't do great with the cold, so this is going to be a challenge for me being in this cold weather because obviously most of what we do other than sleep is outside 
and so even cooking my fingers were starting to hurt and get numb and yeah so I was kind of just running around and jumping around to keep warm but um yeah we'll see if we survive this winter <laughs> in this tent it's definitely gonna be a challenge for me and the kids not so much Matt he's like such a warm-bodied person and it takes a lot for him to get really cold but I'm from Miami and I've always lived in very temperate climates and so anything that is below 50 degrees is cold for me <laughs> and we're well below that right now so yeah I'm just gonna keep dancing and jumping right Chuck? I'm gonna keep warm and we'll see how it goes anyway it's time for us to eat dinner before it gets dark